Jim, you got me okay? Okay. Um, you know, when I was growing up, my dad came to me one day, and he goes, son, you know, and when he said that, I neither knew I was in trouble or I was in for a speech that I need to pack a lunch for. But, <laughs> but he came to me one day, and he goes, son, you know, there are three, you know, certainties in life. There's death, there's taxes, and then there's a church's annual commitment campaign. <laughs> Well, my name's Tim Hoagland. I'm the treasurer here at First Christian Church, and I can let you guess what topic I'm going to chat on today. So, uh, my family and I have been members here at First Christian for over 15 years, and uh, it was, you know, we came here after being part of a disciples uh, denomination here locally, and my wife had grown up in the Disciples Church as well, and and we had been to First Christian because we lived fairly close. We'd been for some Christmas Eve services on a regular basis. And when it came time for us to kind of to find that new church home, we made a visit here. And, and I can tell you the feeling of warmth and acceptance that day uh, is something I still feel today. Uh, whether it was Faye Watson, you know, greeting us at the front door, whether it was, you know, Charlotte Tharp, you know, coming in and, and kind of just greeting us like we'd been there forever. It was a, a feeling of love that, you know, I've, to be honest, I never had felt in another congregation before, and it's just, I think, it's part of the DNA of this congregation, and it is something very special. Um, as we go through and talk a little bit about kind of our annual commitment campaign, I, I put down a few thoughts. It's really, to be honest, it's a little bit scattered, but I'll just kind of work through it. You know, typically when we get up and do an offertory or we talk about our commitment campaign, we're talking about what your resources of time, talent, and treasure are going to go for. And, you know, and we, we hear a lot about, you know, kind of the expenses, whether it's things were related to that, that fine door we've got here to the left, or, you know, just the, the payment of staff and the upkeep of a building, and then our commitment to our external outreach through our homeless grants and those types of things that, you know, it's a really about the what. And I think, you know, what I want to kind of just touch a little bit on today is really about the why. You know, why, you know, why do we, you know, give? Why do we provide our time and our talent and our resources to this community of faith to do the work, the greater work of Christ? Uh, is it, you know, because we have certain expectations that we, you know, we have a cost benefit we think we're going to get from it? Or is it something a little bit different? And, you know, one of the things that has always struck me as being a little bit odd, and it's not, it's not here necessarily, but it's been in other congregations that have been, is that, there's always been a very transactional view as it relates to giving and kind of, uh, you know, the giving of, of, of monies and times and talents and resources. It's kind of, it's very discreet in order and it's kind of, you know, what are people going to get back from it? How do we look at it? How do we control it? And it, and it struck me as, uh, from, as odd when I was at the previous congregation that I was at. I happened to be the congregational chair and we were going through really some very difficult times. We'd had a... a a minister change and we were having a, a little bit of a contentious budget meeting and it just got a little bit kind of heated and somebody kind of piped up and said we just need to run this church like a business you know and I kind of thought about it and I, you know I looked at this person and I said you know as disciples of Christ what business are we in and I think that that really kind of struck home to me that a lot of times we take and we look at what we're doing for a congregation or for a church we just think about it the way we think about our everyday lives as it relates to, to giving of funds. And I, you know, and I would kind of contend that our, our giving needs to be more transformational as opposed to transactional. And that as we, you know, as we prepare to kind of think about what we want to kind of commit to on, you know, on an annual basis, but then really how we give every, every week or every day that, we're, that we take an inventory of those, you know, of our time and our talent and our resources and we look at it are, and say, okay, are we looking at this through a transactional lens? Are we trying to control costs? Are we trying to limit something? Or are we trying to, you know, kind of see what we can do with those resources? Because, you know, in the eyes of God, we've been given, you know, the opportunity, to, you know, we need to be living like Christ, we need to be loving like Christ, and we need to be caring for others like Christ. And that really, in my opinion, kind of should be our overriding uh, premise for what we're doing. So as we, you know, next week we're going to be sending out a communication and probably come out towards the end of the week just talking a little bit about how we go through our annual commitment process. 
Uh, there'll be you know, some information about the timing of it, the information about how you can make your commitment, whether it's you know, through email, whether you can go online and do the online giving form, whether you want to call or email me directly or call uh, the church office. But we'll be sending that out. And I, you know, I would like for you to kind of, between now and then, to kind of pray about what you want to be you know, doing and what you want to be committing to for this, uh, this community faith going forward. You know, the past 18 months have been pretty difficult for all of us. I mean, it's been a very disruptive time in our lives. I mean, uh, the way we've communicated, the way we've, you know, we've socialized, the way we visited with our families, the way we've educated our children, uh, even the way we've kind of uh, mourned those that we have passed, it's been, that have passed, it's been totally different. It's been a disruption on our lives. And, and as we kind of move back towards a little bit of normality, I think it's important for us to think, that we need to look at kind of a focus on this congregation kind of internally, because there's a time of kind of physical, sight, you know, emotional, spiritual healing that all congregations, all people will be going through as we kind of move back to sort, some normality. So with those things, you know, even though we've gone through this real disrupt, disrupted time and kind of chaos, the one thing that has been a constant through all of that that's been really the, the message, the love, and the promise that this table delivers to us every Sunday. So whether we're getting kind of that, that promise each week here or we, whether we take that out to people outside these walls, that's something that has not changed. It's been that way before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and it'll be that way going forward. So as I mentioned, the mechanics of our kind of our process will be we'll send out a communication about the, the annual giving and the commitment, and then uh, we'll have the timing as to when we need to be getting kind of those back in because it's more than about what you're kind of committing. It allows the church to plan for the upcoming year on how we're going to, to utilize the resources that we have. Um, as Terry mentioned, this is a very exciting time in the life of First Christian Church. Uh, I mean. He had a, a message a couple of weeks ago talking about how our story is going to be written. Uh, you know, we're starting a new chapter here at First Christian Church. It's, it's really, really exciting. And I just would like for, you know, as you go through the process of, of looking for your, uh, your, you know, making a commitment to this congregation, I'd like for you to kind of pray about how your story fits into the community of faith that fits into the larger narrative of what God's plan is for us. Amen.